being better begins by being balanced. Welcome back to the Athletic Fuel Tank Podcast with your host, Coach Gary Collier. Our current podcast series called Incremental Change, Baby Steps for Youth Athletes continues today with an episode on ADD and ADHD and how these two affect a player's uh, performance and how they can get an edge on the pitch. If you appreciate the content, like, share, and subscribe so you not have to miss another amazing episode. So let's get started. I have my notes with me today. Athletic Fuel Tank provides direct and individual sports nutrition coaching with an emphasis on player development through mindset, nutrition, and pathways of player advancement. The fundamental principles of how youth athletes gain knowledge for advanced performance and recovery techniques funnels into a lifestyle of change. Youth athletes manage their time, the resources to their parents, their parents' investment is imperative to the athlete's success. So it makes perfect sense to invest in nutrition and mindset training to take advantage of how this process of professional pursuit begins. All right, guys. Hey, remember that you are an amazing individual and the success of your future depends solely on you. All right. Um, well, good morning, parents. I really wanted to talk to you a little bit about performing athletes uh, especially those that present with a struggle in the classroom. They also present with a struggle uh, with ADHD or ADD. Um, and we're going to talk about those rel relevant factors, what those are, and how those affect those students. Um, and there are some attributes that uh, can be taken from players who don't necessarily have these problems, but they could uh, be undiagnosed, and you don't even know it at this point. So we're gonna talk about it a little bit and we're gonna talk about some food recommendations that are gonna help improve the performing athlete in this area. All right. Okay, so first of all, what I wanna talk about is I wanna talk about ADD and ADHD. Attention Deficit Disorder um, in the DSM-5 is classified as a learning um, a neurological uh, behavior. Um, and based on that understanding, um, attention deficit disorder with hyperactivity would be the other qualifier that would allow us to understand that there's two variant um, uh, definitions. And so attention deficit is when a child is not necessarily acting out. And so we don't even notice this. Um, their attention is distracted, is um, set aside, it is sometimes um, drawn away by other things that are happening in the classroom. So for example, um, a child whose attention has been um, side railed, if you will, in the classroom, uh, might look at the teacher, um, might look at the coach, might nod, the teacher smiles, the coach smiles. Um, uh, the child smiles, right? And so you don't even see any variance in this. And um, they might be asked a question, but they're not really acting out. And so the kid might respond very simply with, um, I'm not sure, or mm, um, I don't really know the answer to that, or, you know, I don't know, right? And so typically, since that kid doesn't present with any acting out behaviors, um, doesn't get the information, but gets away with it. And they're very skilled in finding a activity that helps them, um, they work with the ability to um, compensate and they find ways to compensate their uh, apparent disability. And it's not necessarily, it's a disability is in a classified is the inability to um, function in such a way that would be it would have a commonality and that's why we would call it a disability um, so that student is um, very much um, most of us right and you know we get distracted we look over here we understand that TV and things like that are going to slip away and distract us. Um, we have our commercials that are shorter and shorter and shorter. We could use a half hour program, which is only 20 minutes, which is um, eight to 10 minutes of uh, commercials. And then the, it's broken up every six minutes for these commercials. And then you realize that now that we have social media, um, 
Facebook's required 30 seconds. Um, Instagram, you do, you know, uh, 30, one minute, 15 seconds. You know, on TikTok, you're going to be working with 15 seconds. Or you're just going to get a picture and you're going to flip past that picture because that's what we do. Um, so we get very distracted in that context. Okay, let me identify real quick for you. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how, uh, what these two things are, ADD and ADHD, how they affect the athlete on the pitch, and then some foods uh, and some recommendations that will help fix um, some of these inherent problems. Because paying attention on the pitch, um, soccer IQ is very important that you understand what the coach is asking you to do and that you execute it immediately. Um, at the upper levels, if a coach, it could be any coach from any team, steps on the pitch and, and gives you directions, and those directions that you take have to be adhered to immediately, and you have to show that you comprehend what's going on. Sometimes you're going to see other players do it, and you're going to be like, oh, okay, I get it. I know what's going on. But sometimes you won't. You might be the first person in line, and you might have to execute that, and you're going to have to go, what? Huh? Again? I don't know. Uh, show me. And it is not a great thing for a coach because a coach doesn't have time for that. So we're going to talk about how to fix that. Um, okay, so let's go on to ADHD. ADHD is the one that everyone knows about. Um, it's the hyperactivity, okay? So the neurotransmitters in the brain um, produce lots of extra serotonin, uh, dopamine. There's a lot of extra characteristics in this individual. We're going to talk about some of the deficiencies of the micronutrients that might characterize the, um, the cognitive dissonance uh, for, that, for that player um, and how to increase that awareness. So hyperactivity with AD, attention deficit disorder with hyperactivity is going to be when you see that student tapping their pencil, uh, talking to a friend, throwing something, getting out of their seat, um, uh, running around. Um, usually they're, they're doodling, they're playing with things, they're tapping, they're talking, they're making sounds, they're making noises, they're making gestures to other people in the classroom. This becomes a distraction, right? And that's part of what the, this is all about, is it is a distraction. Um, they are quickly distracted. Um, they're spontaneous. They have to do things immediately because their brain is really thinking of a lot of things simultaneously. Um, when they hear something, when they see something, um, also, you know, even with the autism brain, you're going to see some of these characteristics, high functioning, that they become very highly distracted with the variants of, of things that are going on around them. So, for the athlete, though, um, this is can be a distraction and turn on the field. The coach is gonna give them a directive, have them run, and possibly have them um, do some other activities that they feel that they're not paying attention. Um, when in essence, an ADHD kid is probably one of the most brilliant kids in your class. They are thinking and processing so much information that probably what you're doing in the classroom as a teacher is super boring. Um, usually talking, lecturing, boring, right? And we don't use the word boring because as adults we understand that we don't get bored, we just need to find something better to do. Um, so what can we do for these kids? So I have um, six things here I'm going to talk about real quick with you um, for the ADHD kids. So nutrition. Nutrition is the key essential to being better by being balanced. If your mind, your body, uh, your, your gut health, if everything's balanced, you're going to perform at an optimum level beyond um, the understanding of, of who you are now. So let's talk about that real quick. Um, one of the things that is characterized in our nutrition is we need on a regular basis to take in omega-3. Um, there's omega-3 and omega-6. Um, omega-3 is, is an essential um, nutrient that our body needs that we cannot produce inside our body. There's omega-7s and omega-9s, but our body makes those. So these, the three and the six. So where do we get these? Now, a lot of times you have to say, oh yeah, shellfish and, 
and, and um, uh, oily fish and, and shellfish and oily fish doesn't necessarily sound yummy um, unless you like that kind of stuff and it's it's wonderful so um, so like um, getting these there are supplements that you can get now we want to make sure that the this is stored so in, in the fat cells so we want to make sure that this omega-3 then is um, administered in a proper dosage it says daily but uh, twice a week could be sufficient if you check the recommendations of the dosage so omega-3s will help um, level that um, the the ADHD brain out um, Another thing that's really good to understand is proteins. So proteins help neutralize the sugars in the body to help keep those spikes. We know ADHD, you know I'm gonna talk about the sugars, but I'm gonna talk about the sugars in the perspective of ADHD, no, all athletes. So understanding that we're having um, lean proteins, uh, such as uh, milk, um, proteins, uh, peanut butter, uh, oatmeal, things like that. Um, and making sure that they're complex carbohydrates when we introduce these things also, the uh, complex carbohydrates uh, as those things also. Um, um, any uh, beans or peas or anything of, of that nature that we're getting so that are slow release sugars that we're not getting the spike. And the proteins are gonna help neutralize that function. Uh, there was a Swedish study that said increasing these omega-3s has diminished the effects of um, uh, players and students uh, with ADHD um, over the course um, almost immediately to three months to six months it will help diminish some of the um, outlining characteristics um, that I described earlier um, another factor is finding out that kids with ADHD might actually be anemic or iron deficient. Iron deficiency is pretty common, especially with athletes that are performing at a high level, um, and also in female athletes for um, the menstrual um, portion of that. So I found a good supplement. Um, so we say liver and onions, right? High in iron. So everyone's like, oh, gross. So I had five people for the first time try it last night, and all five people were successfully happy with that. And I'll have a link um, in there for the recipe if you're interested. Um, so we understand liver, spinach, fish, beans, turkey, things of that nature are going to be um, essential in helping to increase the iron naturally. Iron supplements is not recommended unless you take um, your athlete or your student to the doctor and have their iron tested to find out how anemic they are. If they are below, usually typically ADHD kids are anemic, um, are iron deficient, but if you find out if you go find that it's below a 35 you might want to just consider the food supplements if it's 22 or lower you're going to want to probably um, ask the doctor his recommendations for supplementation um, another release for neurotransmitters and the serotonin in your brain the dopamine the things that cause those feel-good feelings um, a good regulator in understanding that zinc and magnesium these are our micronutrients that are help characterize a benefit to the youth athlete and this will um, curtail his or her ability to um, those so when we look at any type of disability or any type of behavior that is an impairment to the person right not so much other people but to the person like a person can't finish they can't you know complete a thought there's not a lot of um polish on what they do because they're rushing through it i, I you've seen their handwriting it's atrocious right typically if we can we have a bell curve and if we can chop off the ends, like the, the high end stuff, the stuff that really is uh, the focus of our distraction, and we pick that one thing, we can help curtail that behavior by giving that um, student or athlete a, a task, a task to do within that parameter. And a task, for example, let's say they are 
um, yelling out in class and you know so it might be a tally sheet or something of that nature right um, those are very characteristic because they're self-regulating self-help so you always want to make sure whatever we do with nutrition for kids um, or behavior modification with kids is we want to give them the understanding that they're in control and they're gonna um, self-monitor and they're gonna self-regulate and this is gonna give them the benefit of being successful um, so in saying that these things will help that that student or that athlete that student or that athlete on the pitch is now going to have more focus clarity it's going to retain more of the information it's going to stay focused longer um, less distractibility um, therefore creating a player with more um, zeal on the field and the ability to attack that goal and so if a coach comes up and says hey i need you to run around here go back here dribble through this and then i need you to go long and shoot um, to the top corner he's going to retain all of that information or she's going to retain that information and be able to execute what is needed okay guys i really uh thank you for hanging in there it's kind of a short one but i just wanted to let you know that one more thing i forgot one more thing i wanted to add to this i'm going to call it the one more thing um if you have athletes or no athletes who are in special education classes just learning disabilities and things of that nature it is a benefit to encourage them to participate in sports not only is the sport the endorphins and stuff that they're going to receive from that is going to benefit that student they've had so many years of unsuccessful academic um, attainment and so their whole school experience is based on that that lack of that failure that sense of failure um, so when they are involved in sports many of the time that I see these students attaining and moving on to a sport instead of the academics their self-confidence their self-awareness they 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 succeed they they get medals um they get uh awards and things of that nature and then they become a intricate balanced member of that school and no longer are they identified just through their um, disability but they're identified through their ability and this is something if you know anyone encourage them to participate in sports not banned not choir those are fine those are great but sports is going to get them that physical attribute that they need for their bodies to uh, move around and get the proper chemical balance in their brains with the right nutrition and then this student will actually perform better in the classroom surprise it's no secret and it's true so all my students you know I they are hungry they don't seem to want to do any work I feed them with healthy foods and amazingly they eat them because they're hungry and they perform beyond the optimum level that you would expect them to, per to perform at so that being said thank you for hanging in there um let's see um remember i do have a facebook page it's called parents of serious youth athletes um and it is about fuel tank support it is one of the platforms where I discuss up and coming concerns um, through the ideas and our development of youth. We help navigate them through the paths of life, try to help them understand what they need to work on. Uh, we can be reached through Facebook, Instagram, or at athleticfueltank.com. Uh, you're welcome to drop me a DM and I will respond quickly. Hey, one thing I do, my uh, morning vibes is my daily affirmations. Hey, don't forget to get in front of that mirror and to do your daily affirmations, all right? Don't forget to look in that mirror today and tell yourself, I love you. Thank you for being you. I want to be the best for you, so you better do the best for me, right? Talk solid to yourself. And I love you. Hey, thank you guys very much, and have a beautiful and tremendous day.